Hey, first I wanted to say thank you uh, to every, all the guests here for coming to the excellent experience. It's been a heck of a day. I hope you've enjoyed looking at some of the fantastic products that uh, surround the room. Um, to end our day, I want to introduce a, one of our colleagues and the Chief Technology Officer of Lenovo, Senior Vice President Peter Hortensius, to talk to us a little about X1 and maybe the future of technology. Sure. Well, I don't know about the future future, but we'll do our best. We'll do our best. So, uh, hi. I'm, uh, as Jerry said, I'm Peter Hortensius. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Lenovo. But for uh, many years of my 10-year career here at Lenovo and my longer career than that even at IBM, I was tied to the ThinkPad team and I ran the ThinkPad team for years. So we celebrated 100 million recently and when the team gave me my goodbye, maybe me kick out the door, but anyway, they gave me my goodbye, they gave me credit for 82 million of them. So I feel pretty good about it. So I know a little bit about ThinkPad. But I'm here really to talk to you as our CTO and try to give you a little bit of a perspective about you know, ThinkPad and how it got to where it is, but also how we see some of the future evolving and some of the things that we see coming down the pike. So, as CTO, I'm really responsible at the end of the day for the innovation that sits in the company and ensuring that it's right and relevant and that we have the right skills to deliver on that. And I'm really proud that we were recently recognized by the Boston Consulting Group as one of their top 50 innovative companies in the world. And that's in all categories, not just an IT category. And they base that on our ability to move quickly. They base that on our ability to explore adjacent spaces. They base it on our ability to have some substantial R&D talent, and you're seeing some of those results here today. And they based it fundamentally on being able to leverage the technology platforms that exist in the industry, which is something we're really good at. I'm really proud of our abilities in those areas. I think for R&D, there's no better example than what we're showing here today with our various X1 platforms. You know, from a carbon that uh, not only now is a magnificent traditional notebook, but also now has this ability to fold and a, a convertible. A technique that we pioneered in, in our labs many, many years before we brought it to market because we were waiting for the market to be ready for it. And so when we shipped our first yoga in 2012, I think everybody knows the response. And that shows not just our speed, but our timing in terms of being able to bring technologies like that to market. We created the X1 without sacrificing the detail and the design that we have. You're going to hear from David Hill a little later, our chief designer. And he will take you through the painstaking processes that we use to make decisions around design that exists in these boxes. And they are, that's a critical element of what you all expect in a ThinkPad. And it's something we've never given up. In fact, with my history, I can tell you very clearly, we've made it better. You know, if I look at also kind of the long haul history, uh, you know, people keep asking me this question, you know, what do I think of the X1 because we did the X300, what feels like a lifetime ago. And I remember doing that system as an example of, you know, you're in a race, you're working really hard, you're doing a bunch of things that have never been done in the industry before, and yet you're still making sure that the quality's right and the things are delivered in a way that everyone could love the product and rely on the product. And guess what? When I look at the X1, when we first created that thing a first few years ago to what we've delivered now, I don't think we've lost a beat on that. I really don't think. If you're looking at a system that's, you know, 16 and a half millimeters thin, I mean, that is really tiny. Even when you fold it over, it's still a relatively thin tablet. It's an amazing system, and it just shows the capability of our R&D team. If I start to think a little bit more about other kinds of technologies that we're sticking in our systems, we need to look back into some of our research labs and think through what are the problems that our research labs are thinking about that then feed our product teams to help their imaginations and their go. And I've got a couple things that we have in our labs that I've brought with me here that we use not because we envision this product being a great shipping product, although we have some debates about that, but we use them more to inspire ourselves and to really inspire our designers and our engineers and our marketeers to think beyond the confines of what they're in. And so the first thing I wanted to show you is this. This is, a, looks like a watch, looks just like a Moto 360 watch. And to be frank, a lot of it is. But if I wear it like I would normally a watch and I want to look at a large image, I just do a swipe like this. And right now I'm looking at a three-dimensional view of the Bird's Nest Stadium in, a, in the Olympic Park in Beijing on an image that's about this big, and it's floating in front of me in 3D. 
This takes advantage of something you see in a lot of our products now, projectors. We love projectors. We stick them in anything we can figure out how to stick them into. Why do we like projectors so much? Because they solve real problems. And the problem is, as humans, on a device this big, I want to see something that's like a PC screen. If I'm looking at a PC or a tablet screen, well, if I want to share that, I really need to see it on a much bigger screen. Projectors solve that problem. So whether it's the virtual interactive display that we invented, that we stuck in here, or regular projectors that you're seeing in, the, in that fantastically innovative Idea Center product that we're showing over in the Equinox, to the projectors now that we've integrated in the new X1 tablet, you see this kind of thinking feeding kind of the way we go to market. Another cool idea that tries to take advantage of projection is this idea that we created using a phone that we call SmartCast. We showed this last year at our, uh, at our Tech World event, and I'm going to ask James to show it a little bit of it to you. What SmartCast is, is a phone with a built-in projector. And that's interesting. It allows you to have a projector and a phone, and uh, great, I can see this nice big image. But what makes the SmartCast really innovative is with a simple twist of the top, James, if you want to show twisting the top. So if you just twist the top of the projector, yeah, got to go the right direction on this one, obviously. And pull the stand out. What I have now, I have a full-size keyboard sitting in front of me right here. I could project a game screen on here. So you want to play Fruit Ninja on a screen like this, or you want to play Fruit Ninja on a screen like this? I know which one I'd like to play it on. So the point is projector solving another problem, which is how do I make a phone really try to deliver an experience as close as I can get to a notebook experience? It will never be the same, but we can get it a lot closer. So those are examples of how we use projection and other kinds of technologies to really push the lines of what we know how to do. And it shows the, the foundation of innovation and research and technology capability that exists in Lenovo to feed that capability inside of our, our world. Another great example and something I'm very proud of is Lenovo is very smart about how it leverages other people's technology platforms. And we use this by not just the traditional way that people think of a PC working with Microsoft and Intel, but by working with all our suppliers. And one of the best products, the most amazing product that I've seen in years is actually our OLED ThinkPad X1. If you see that display, I think you all have the same reaction I have. I want it. You're not asking a lot of other questions about it. You, I want it. I haven't said that about a display in like five, six years. But you, you could ask Luis and the ThinkPad team what I said when I saw that. I want it. I want it now. Right? Because it's amazing and it's beautiful. But the reality of that display, there's a reason why they're not sitting in everybody's notebook. And there's a reason why we're showing one and everybody else is talking about one. Because the reality is they're very hard to make work in a notebook. OLED displays have this problem called stiction, which is if you just keep the same image on the screen, it will literally freeze onto the screen. Remember the old days of CRTs and burn-in? It's back. Problem. PC isn't really designed to deal with that. So we had to do a lot of engineering to fix that problem. We had to do a lot of engineering to make a yoga have great LTE performance. When you fold that over, where's the antenna? The antenna is sitting right behind the, all the metal that's sitting in the rest of the machine. Not a great place for an antenna. So the team's literally made a window. You can't see it in the machine, but if you're RF waves, you can see it. They literally make out of the hybrid composite material that literally lets waves go through the machine in one narrow window, yet is metal everywhere else in the machine. Really clever and really novel. And then one thing that I learned the other day that really surprised me was to make the machine that thin yet still strong, of course we use metal, magnesium, other kinds of technologies, and carbon, obviously, to make it work. Big problem in making that work, when it's that thin, the metal doesn't flow right. It literally cools faster than you can flow the metal. So we worked with our suppliers, and in fact it was a lot of our engineering, that created this ability to flow that metal faster in the form so that we could create a machine that was that thin. So those are examples of where we leverage our partners, because they obviously have a lot of knowledge, but we have a lot of engineering know-how that we bring to bear. All of that goes into every ThinkPad, every Think Center, every, frankly, idea product that you see in Equinox over there as well. So 
people ask where I see the future of technology, and I think where you see us going as a company as we expand uh, into various adjacent markets, building infrastructure products now that supply and support the cloud. The cloud is something we love because we supply all the machines that it runs on, or at least a lot of the machines that it runs on. Likewise, on the other side, phones and smartphones and the capabilities that creates, tablets, all of those things. We view the future as about many, many kinds of devices that individuals will use, not about the one device that everyone will use. And the cloud keeps all of that in sync and working. So whether the world pushes us in one direction or the other, we feel as Lenovo, we're very confident about where that's going to go because we supply all of that. And we work with all of that and we work with the partners that deliver all of that. So, I just wanted to conclude by saying thank you for coming and being quiet despite it being bar hour here and, uh, and listening to what I have to say. But also I just wanted to say I've been in this industry a long time and I'm very excited right now about where the industry is going because it's a really exciting place. There's a lot of things that are happening and I'm really excited about Lenovo's ability to really deliver on what a lot of our technology is promising to be. So thank you very much.